Now it's time to, to welcome the man of it all. <laughs> Mac McAvoy, you can handle it, come on. <laughs> Yes, men write books too. <laughs> Imagine. Um, yes, uh, lovely to see you all this morning. How are you, Emma? Hi, Mike. Um, I just want to welcome you all here today. It's nice to have a little gathering like this in such lovely uh, surroundings as this this morning in the corner of Fermanagh. Um, I'm just going to get my notes out because. I'm getting old, so I do forget things. Um, okay, first and foremost, um, it's been lovely today already to have met so many inspirational people. Some of the people who came up here and spoke, it was, it was quite moving, and uh, it's been lovely to meet people from all over the world. I myself finally made it here after a very long and arduous journey. I live about a mile and a half <laughs> that direction. <laughs> So uh, if I appear a little jet-lagged, you'll probably forgive me for that. My name is Alan McAvoy, but from the age of about 12, I've been known as Mac to pretty much everybody, apart from my mum and dad. Um, so many of you people are so far ahead of me on your respective journeys as authors. Um, it's been ever so slightly intimidating, but it has been more so incredibly inspiring already this morning. So. Um, that aside, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I got here. I uh, I'm just have one book written, second one out in about two weeks' time. So my journey as an author has been quite short so far. So I'm going to give you a little brief, brief synopsis of how I kind of got to be here today. I was, I was born in Port Leash, which is pretty much in the middle of the island of Ireland. Um, grew up in a very loving home and... Uh, enjoyed school, did pretty well at school, and that's where I found my love for uh, reading. But uh, during my school days, I became obsessed with music, playing it, listening to it, reading about it, writing about it, and um, I discovered drums, which became uh, the love of my life for many years. Sorry, Don. <laughs> and uh, after school, I went to college in Carlow, where I got a diploma in architecture. And it was whilst working in an architect's office in Port Leash, about a year later, that a friend of mine was passing one day and dropped in to say hi. And he told me about a band in County Galway who were looking for a drummer. And uh, so I called up, and I went and I did the audition. And I got the gig, and for the next 16 years, that was what I did for a living. So um, during that time, I fulfilled so many ambitions that I had as a teenager. Um, we had hit singles, and we toured the world, and played some legendary venues, played festivals to thousands of people, and did TV shows, and the whole rigmarole of that. So um, it was also my first kind of foray into writing, I suppose. I had dabbled with writing in school, just writing silly kind of eight-line poems to amuse my mates and stuff. But uh, in the band, I kind of inadvertently became one of the lyricists for much of the original material we put forth. So um, moving, jumping on a bit, about two years before I finished with the band, I kind of got a calling of sorts to work with kids, children, particularly kids with special needs. So uh, while I was still on the road and touring, I um, started working voluntarily in what was then Ellenbrook, and what is now Willowbridge in Enniskillen. So I used to go in there on Mondays and Tuesdays, and then I would go and play for the rest of the week. And I just found it so incredibly rewarding um, to work with kids like that. So we worked with kids really from with disabilities ranging from very mild to profound. So it was quite a learning curve and quite an eye opener for me. So eventually in 2008, I parted with life on the road after 16 years, um, got married. And um, after spending six months in Australia on an extended honeymoon, parenthesis party, um, I tried to settle into a normal kind of a working life, five-day-a-week life, which took a while, but I got there. 
and uh, I work now uh, in Devonish Enniskillen in the learning support department. Um, from coming up, since coming home, I've established my own drum academy at the house as well, and I still play drums at the weekends. Um, 2012, October, uh, my son Jacob was born under extremely difficult circumstances, and so began the parenting roller coaster. Um, Jacob had severe silent reflux, and he was dairy intolerant, so his first six months here were pretty turbulent and painful for him. But it was while nursing Jacob one night, um, or early one morning, depending on your mindset, <laughs> that I really started to think about the myriad of issues that uh, children have to deal with, young children. Um, all too often we get caught up in the pressures, I suppose, of adulthood, you know, paying a mortgage and paying your bills and, you know, uh, providing for your kids, and, you know, worries about getting sick and so on and so forth. But that night I kind of thought that kids have so much to deal with and a lot of it, even though you can help them along the way, they kind of have to figure their own way around a lot of this stuff, I find. So that gave me my idea for what would eventually become this here, my very first book, called Webster's Best Day Ever. So more about that in a minute. Um, my daughter Myla arrived a couple of years later. She was also dairy intolerant. I remember thinking, oh, Jesus, here we go again. But uh, luckily, because of our experiences with Jacob, we got her on the correct meds really quickly and, and got her sorted. But I remember when Myla was about a year old, I sat down one night and decided I would actually try to write a book as opposed to just scribbling things down. Um, Jacob, my, my son, who's seven very soon, he suffers really badly with anxiety. Um, sometimes all-consuming. Um, it's not easy for him. And we have brought him to any number of therapists, uh, healers, consultants, doctors, the whole shebang. And although they have helped to some extent, I don't think anything has made a real lasting difference. Um, so it affects him every day on some level. And at times it has got to the point where he didn't want to leave the house. So I made my mind up that the books I write are going to be books that contain a message for kids and for parents. They're not just, uh, these aren't just stories about some cute farm animal buddies. They uh, carry this message to help parents and their kids try to overcome some of these problems that children deal with from day to day. Um, reading is a big thing in my house with my kids, which is great. Um, but I began to notice that at night when I was reading to my kids, so many stories were, you know, fairy tales or superheroes or uh, princesses and so on, which are all lovely, happily ever after stories, but nothing really that you could apply to real life, I found. So that's kind of where I got the idea. So in the Green Hills Gang series, there's six books. Um, each one stars one of the six characters in the books, and they all uh, touch upon a different topic. Um, this one is about anxiety. The next one's about friendship, there's one about body image, there's one about bullying, another one about nightmares, and so on and so forth. So, um, what really hit me was when I went to the various schools when the book came out to read to the kids, usually between kind of five and eight years old. Um, they got it upon, upon one reading of it, which was a real moment for me because it just, I knew then that it kind of it hit its mark. So that was, a, that was an important moment too. So, um, my second book, I got the cover of yesterday. It's just down the back there. So the cover reveal was yesterday. Hopefully it will be out in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, that's a lovely kind of a warm and fuzzy Christmas themed book um, dealing with friendship and how it's nice to do things for your friends without wanting anything in return. And uh, I'm very excited about that one. There's four more books in this series which are written and ready to go pretty much. Um, I'm also currently about a third of the way through writing a kind of a, a warts and all um, account of what life is like on the road in a van with a rock and roll van. <laughs> so uh, that one probably won't be in the children's book. <laughs> so um, I have a number of other ideas for books as well in the pipeline too, as well as ideas for some cuddly toys of the Green Hills gang characters and also Lots going to be happening in the next few months going forward. I want to say a special thanks to Karen um, for believing in my books and giving me the start. 
Um, I think what you're doing with your publishing companies and with your academy is really beautiful and well done to you. I think we all need that. Um, also, just want to give a mention to Kevin McHugh, he's not here today, but um, Karen being local, me being local, I suppose, I know I'm a blow-in, but I'm local as well, and Kevin McHugh being local, it just proves to you young people here today that um, if you believe in it, it, it really can happen. I mean, there's, there's books that you're seeing today coming from this area, basically, that are worldwide um, available and getting recognition all over the world. So what I would say to you guys down here is if you believe in something and you really feel that you have a passion for something, do it because I can't imagine anything worse than spending your life doing something that makes you unhappy or that you feel miserable doing. Find your place in the world and find your purpose and uh, just grab it with both hands and go for it. So um, I hope all you good people here enjoy the rest of your time in Ireland. You've got some nice weather here for a change. I'm just glad the PA didn't blow up when a male voice came through the speakers. <laughs> but um, so that's it. Gorna Mahogu Valera Akorja, Benayu Akorja. Thank you. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very